<laughs> Thank you, friends. I appreciate this very much. I have a short talk. Sorry, sorry can't all sit down. <laughs> it's short talk. I wanted to um, say um, mainly what happened at the beginning, as I recall it, since people were some many people said they'd be interested. I got involved in in, in um, Burma way back in 1959. I was uh, supposed to be organizing a peace seminar for the Quakers in and uh, in Southern Asia, and I was in Burma for three months when General Ni Win, who was the strong strong man, came in, became the um, defense secretary, and told me I had to leave within a week. Didn't give me any reason, so I. Didn't make me feel very happy because I had 40 people coming from all over Southern Asia, but um, that was one of the motivations, I guess, why I got interested in Burma. Uh, years later, in the 80s, I was in Bangkok. I visited an American Mennonite in his small, crowded house in a poor part of the city, which he had made available to refugees from Burma. One of the persons I met there was a medical aid worker who was going back into the villages the next day. He was taking the place of another aid worker who had been picked up by the military, been interrogated, questioned, tortured, and then killed. More than likely, the same thing was going to happen to this to man I was talking to, and he knew it, but he was going anyway, which was another motivating factor. In 90, as you all know, a national election was held in Burma, won decisively by the National League for Democracy, but the military junta, as you know, declared the elections illegal. So following these events, I just wanted to tell you a few things that were happening uh, at that time. A small group of Canadians met in the offices of Peace One Canada to discuss how to help the Burmese democracy movement. They included Penny Sanger, and Harn Yanwei, and So Tin, Nancy Draws, Richard Weeks, Michael Clugston, Terry Cottom, Christine Harmston, David Powell, and myself. Out of these meetings came the plan to hold in February 91 the International Seminar that some have been referred to. Um, it agreed on several actions to be taken and the confirmation of the same Canadian friends of Burma. Later that year, Harn Yangwei, Richard Weeks, and I traveled to Thailand to meet with members of the resistance movement led by Karen General Bo Mya. We were transferred from the airport to a top secret place in central Thailand, except that the name of the secret place was written in large letters on the outside of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, in 92, Penny, Harn, and others went by longboat across the Moy River to the Karen stronghold of Manor Pla. The village was eventually destroyed by fire but it was through such contacts that we learned firsthand what was happening in two villages. <clears throat> Many actions and the risk taken by Kevin Hepner Valseed and Gary Rosema, two young Canadians on round the world trips who had discovered what was happening in Burma. Each decided to remain and help to expose the inhumane and illegal acts of the military. When interviewed by the CBC, Kevin described Burma as a burning village with the rest of the world standing around just watching it burn. The efforts of Terry Cottom, So Tin, and others to persuade Canadian mining and oil companies to leave Burma and their efforts to get the Canadian government to ban the import of teak products went on at this time. Terry also engaged in many other activities such as a relentless anti-Pepsi campaign involving other NGOs on Burma issues by establishing the Canada Burma Working Group. Again, it was staffed by Penny and Nancy Draws and Corrine Baumgarten, supported by the Canadian Council for International Cooperation. The wonderful work on Burma was done by, by Inter Pires, um, led by people like, like Peter Gillespie and Rebecca, the involvement of Mika Levesque of Rights and Democracy. These are prime examples of how small initiatives can grow and flourish and become big. Finding funds for translation of Suu Kyi's Freedom for Burma, Freedom from Fear from English into Burmese was another small task that we had. 
Her husband, Michael Aris, contacted me to see whether I could raise $5,000 to cover the printing costs. I phoned Gordon Ball, a friend of mine, a member of a small cooperative near El Arvilla. He called back five minutes later to say he had raised it. <laughs> Actually, it was from his wife and himself. <laughs> Good way to raise some money. Uh, helping to arrange meetings with high-ranking government officials like Foreign Affairs Minister Barbara McDougall and PM in exile, exile Dr. St. Wynne was another important activity at that time. Providing moral and financial support to the All Burma Students Democratic Front and the 2,000 students, farmers, and young professionals who defied the military regime by seeking a return to democratic government. They lived in makeshift jungle camps along the Thai Burmese border and ate whatever they could find in the forests. So finally, these are a few snapshots of some of the events and the people associated with them, with Canadian Friends of Burma, as I've experienced them. Those of you who know who I have other ones. And though parts of Burma may still be burning, Kevin, I hope that we are no longer standing around simply watching them burn. Thank you.